Um, so Jose, uh, can you tell uh, us um, how you, uh, w like, how did you get down to Tennessee? What led you down there? How long was, did you stay in Tennessee? Um, and just the, the general concept, you know, I'll, I'll give the floor to you at, right now. Okay, so basically I was going through a real bad divorce and um, I basically had a psychotic break and um, I was staying with a friend of mine that actually was going to move down to Tennessee and I wind up going with them to go down there and um, where we were supposed to stay, the place had fell through. We didn't really have anywhere to stay and my friend was, you know, his uh, children's mother had lived down there and she had a friend that basically had a room and no one wanted to stay there but because of what I was going through I decided to just stay in Tennessee and I wind up renting the room from uh, Candace. That was the opening question and answer on Justice for All's interview on Monday March 14th 2022 of Jose Roman. It is Wednesday March 16th 2022 and i have some observations about this opening statement mr roman starts out his first answer to his the first question with a very public admission of an episode of serious mental incapacity and people who have dealt with those kinds of issues rarely if ever talk about them in public and certainly not to a complete stranger and potentially millions of listeners i'm going to suggest that the only time people who suffer with these things make those kinds of admissions at the very beginning of a narrative is to establish circumstances for the credibility of what comes after I am in no way suggesting that Mr. Roman is lying. However, we have no way of corroborating the truthfulness of that statement as opposed to perhaps embellishment or exaggeration. On the other hand, his decision to stay with a married woman and her three young children under the circumstances he is about to describe perhaps is corroboration enough for that opening statement. Additionally, I'd like to point out something in the first uh, phrase. The fact that he was staying with a friend, but he, meaning Jose, wound up going with them down there. Who is the friend and who is the them? And people will immediately assume that it's Andrew Hiltz based on a variety of people's opinions and putting one and one together to get two. Jose goes on later to state that Andrew Hiltz does not have his phone number, has not been in contact with him over the course of the last nine or nine months, and does not know where he is at all. And that further, he had not talked to Andrew Hiltz in about three years. So there seems to be a little bit of time discrepancy there, and I'd like to hear from another independent party other than Ellie, Candace, or Jose, or Andrew to corroborate any of it. Some of you out there by now may think that I am being somewhat of a hard ass on Mr. Roman and Mr. Hiltz and perhaps Ellie, but after nine months with so many people in the last three months coming out of the woodwork with their own fanciful tales about what they think they know about the wells and what happens up on the summit of Ben Hill, if the puzzle pieces are not fitting together neatly and concisely, then we need to scrutinize what these people say very, very closely. Jose ended up renting a room from Candace in the winter of 2020 and was there until October of 2020. Don and the oldest son were in Utah during that time. The other two boys and Summer were with Candace in Tennessee. 
Jose says that the house and yard were cluttered and in poor condition. A stairway was at that time the same as we saw in the interview room. There was a couch in front of the door, meaning the basement door, to keep the children from using that basement door as they had no key for the door, or so Jose was told. Jose slept in the kids' playroom. Candace and Candy Hair, Summer, and one of the boys slept upstairs where we saw the bunk beds referred to as the front room. Candace was not left with any money to pay bills or buy groceries during the time Don was in Utah. She would have to call him to get money to pay the bills, and both Jose and Allie have said that Allie would spend part of her paycheck to put food in Candace's house while Don was in Utah. Jose describes Don as foul-mouthed, drinking before he came home from work. Jose says he is violent, controlling, and abusive. When he bought food, it was dollar store food and dollar pizzas and junk food. Ellie has corroborated this. Candace told Jose she didn't want to live in Tennessee by herself anymore and did not want to go to Utah. The house looked like it was half packed to move. Jose said that there were boxes everywhere as if somebody were indeed trying to move. Jose says he got through to Candace eventually that she needed to get away from him, meaning Don, because Don would never change. Jose spoke frequently to Don on the phone while Don was on the road back to Tennessee. Jose was under the impression there was no issue on Don's side with him running a room from Candace. Jose says Don got his old job back and was sober for about two days. On payday, Don filled the refrigerator with junk food again, also beer, soda, and liquor. Jose was working a part-time job by the time Don returned to Tennessee. By the a week later, Don and Candace were drunk every night and in full-blown fight club mode. Don and Candace did not sleep in the basement where their room is alleged to be. Don slept upstairs in the front room where the boys slept. Jose also describes Don as patriarchal and misogynistic. Jose says that Don had an affair with a married woman who lived about a half mile from the wells, who was also an alcoholic and a drug addict in that upstairs room. There was not a wall or door separating the bathroom from the rest of the house, and Jose tells us Don took showers with the children to, quote, save on hot water, close quote, including summer. The night of the argument that sent Don to jail for domestic violence, Jose tells us that Don did throw a beer bottle at him and chipped his front tooth. Candace and Candy Hare stepped in to keep the men apart. Don shoved Candace away, and Jose moved towards Don, and Candy Hare moved out of the way. Candace called the police. Don got into the truck and left. The police arrived, and then eventually Don came back to the house while they were still there. Candace told the police Don had a gun in the car and that he is a felon. The police arrested Don, charging him with domestic violence, Jose reports. Don was only in jail for a week because Candace rescinded the accusations and convinced the judge that it was a mistake, apologized to Don, and so he went back to his job. Jose says he waited until he received his paycheck to leave the Wells house. Candy here took Jose to Rock Hill, South Carolina, not North Carolina, to stay with a woman who had offered to help him get on his feet. Jose tells us that he left the Wells home about a month after Don was arrested and that he was actually living there for about six months. Jose says Don Scherfe Sr. and Don Wells were friends. Scherfe wanted to rent land from Wells to park a camper on. Jose appealed to Candace publicly in this interview, and I reported on it yesterday. I'll leave you links. At any rate, 
Jose appealed to Candace publicly to tell the truth of what happened to Summer. Jose reminds Candace of how many times he and she had to go looking for Summer, who apparently did wander off regularly. And at that time, Summer was three years old. When asked by Justice for All, Justin, if he knew any of some of the people who have surfaced associated with this case, Jose said no to almost all of them, including Bradley Wishon, Jody Sue Brown, Andy Bernard, and a handful of other people, all of which he said he did not know or had never met. He did corroborate that H had been up to the house frequently to hang out with the children and that he that H accompanied them in grandma's truck often that summer would fall asleep at the drop of a hat because she expended so much energy and was such an active busy girl so the picture from 3:09 p.m. the famous sleeping on milk jugs picture was no surprise to Jose. Jose has expressed great remorse and regret over not standing up for both the children and Candace, maybe not by physically confronting Don, but certainly he has said he regrets not picking up the telephone, calling the police and saying, this is how this man treats his wife and his children. I can totally understand him feeling that way. Keeping in mind that Mr. Roman has stated that he spent quite some time out of touch with everyone, including his family, um, trying to pull his life together after this divorce and after leaving the Wells home. It is alleged that even the FBI had a little bit of difficulty finding Mr. Roman. However, the true crime community audience is somewhere between 80 and 98 percent women on any given day and depending on the creator's personality the way the show is run you know it fluctuates up and down mr roman was prepared by justice for all for this interview with photographs and um, interviews to watch to bring him up to speed so that he would understand the do's and don'ts of what you can say and what you can't say on YouTube in the true crime community. I have removed most of the more salacious details that Mr. Roman relayed during his interview. I don't think that they have anything to do with actually finding Summer, although they do paint a fuller picture of who Summer is, who her family is, and the circumstances immediately preceding Summer's disappearance. As Michelle After Dark pointed out this morning, Jose Roman comes from an old school culture that at least expresses verbally a deep respect for women and children, even if they don't always behave that way. And Jose Roman certainly is cut from that mold based on this one interview. And I can't stress that enough. This is one interview after nine months of people inserting themselves into this case with so-called insider information. I like to call those people the information brokers and it doesn't matter if you're a so-called witness or a YouTube content creator. Information brokers get my hackles up. If, and this is a big if, Jose Roman is, for the most part, telling the truth and the situation as he experienced it, then of all the wrong friends and maybe some of the right friends who didn't stand up, Jose Roman might be the best adult male friend Summer had. I really want to believe that. But after a certain content creator 
who called every female honey was finally outed, I became pretty skeptical. And I could have told you that old Fred Hill's little game was a setup of Ziggy from 50 yards. I also could have told you that Don Sherpy Sr. was making a big fuss for a reason that I am not sure I've figured out yet. And even Allie, who seemed like such a kind-hearted, generous friend, when she turned on Candace, rightly or wrongly, not only did she kick Candace when Candace was down, she did it publicly and viciously. And I can't stomach people who behave that way. That's it for now, folks. I do have some follow-up information that I will be working on in the next day or so. The um, after interview on Justice for All channel is airing, and I would like to see that. See you real soon.